Uh, so going, going here uh, today, I got caught in the, got caught in the rain. And the uh, first time in my life, I envy local first developers. Uh, because they're always in a plane or in a tunnel. They never. <laughs> Uh, so hi, yeah, I'm Nikita. I'm going to talk today about local first, uh, why it's not going to win, and why it's not as terrible as it sounds. Uh, so first thing I want you to do is to to think, where are you today? Like, we are at local first conference, right? Um, so if you draw, oops, if you draw local first as a circle. Here, uh, there's actually a bigger circle. And uh, that bigger circle is sync engines. Uh, so I see local first as like a subset of sync engines uh, that like applies some extra constraints, like you have to have your whole data set, you have to have offline writes, conflict resolution, right? But sync engines in general, they might have the syncs, might have not all of them, some of them, none of them, right? So there's like bigger space. Uh, which uh, allows you to make uh, bigger decisions, more interesting decisions. Like it's, it's just uh, in general, like uh, more interesting to talk about. So let's talk for a while. Let's uh, yeah, that's, that explains why the shape, why the circle was the shape. Uh, let's pretend that this is November actually, and we are all in San Francisco uh, at SyncConf because we are going to talk about sync engines. And I, uh, I promise you, like, I drew this before SyncConf was announced. Like, uh, I, I even drew a logo, logo but uh, yeah. Uh, yesterday, like, you see the, the syncing aligned, and like, I, I got the name perfect, I nailed it. Uh, and I refuse to, to change the slide. Okay, so uh, to the main part. Um, the main part software. Software. Soft, where is hard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I've been programming for 20 years, and I internally I've seen a lot of different ways of programming, different programs, and I've wrote a lot myself, right? And internally, I strongly disagree how hard it is to program. I think like the complexity of the problem and complexity of the solution, like the, the, what we need to come up with uh, the programmers, are completely off balance. So like very simple program, ask user for two numbers and print the sum of these two numbers, right? This is implementation. So this is what I think is one of few cases in programming where complexity of the problem and uh, complexity of implementation match, right? Like, I, like, this is fine. Like, uh, I can formulate the problem, like, in one sentence. The program is three lines. Like, it's kind of okay. Like, I agree. This is fine. If all of programming was this way, I would have no problem. But unfortunately, it isn't, right? So the moment, like, we can add one more requirement to this program. It's kind of tiny, but uh, complexity, like, explodes. And that requirement is, of course, I want... Uh, second number to be provided by another person. Like any of you, like any person on the internet, I provide first number, that person provides second number, boom. Explosion in complexity, right? Implementation is not um, that simple anymore. You have to know about server, client, databases, HTML, DNS, proxies, Docker, whatever, like a lot. Like there is a lot of moving parts, they're all fragmented, they're all different, separate. They have their own language, they have their own way of thinking about them, so it's, it's really hard. And this is even like, we change requirement a little bit, complexity change like completely out of proportion. So this is what I disagree with, right? Uh, and my theory is that any important technology in the past, um, like let's say 20 years, like as long as I've been alive, like the technologies I observed myself, but probably before that as well, uh, all of them collapse the stack one way or another. So basically, they took two, two or more parts and merged them together, making the whole like complexity 
less complexity, simpler systems, right? Like this is an animation of... <laughs> nice, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'll give you an example. Okay, so uh, what, why, what, what I mean. Like, this is a, the landscape, right? And like, if we merge HTML and JS, we get React, right? So React, like, basically uh, took care of, like, we don't even, uh, we don't have to think about HTML and JS separately. We can think about one thing, JS, and it handles, like, HTML for us somehow. We don't have to think about it. So it's not two things anymore, it's like one. Like same same applies to Tailwind, which did like JS and CSS, right? Uh, and you can like come up with a lot of examples. Docker com combines like uh, production server and development server. Electron combines like all three systems, which is crazy. Like that you have to write your program three times. Of course, you don't have to do that. Um, and the question here is like, where does it leave sync engines? It's not my water. <laughs> <laughs> there are four bottles, like, yeah. Um, yeah Sync think engine's actually kind of in a good place, right? So, like, this is what I'm trying to say. Like, the, the, the fact that we're working on sync engines is good. I think sync engines are important. I think they are the next big thing because they like, do the same. They combine two separate pieces of technology, like, together and simplify the landscape. Right, uh, so like some of them combine database and client, some like local first, for example, it's uh, where you put like this tiny database in a, in a client, and you you like you have the whole data, you run queries, you you do writes, all of this happens locally, so you don't think about going to some other place to a database. It's it's all in your in your program, right, and it things in background somehow. So other technologies like I know, Firebase or Instant like provide like you combine database and server, so they do stuff that server normally do, do stuff that databases normally do, but you, you have only one thing that you talk about and everything is there. Uh, so yeah, sync engines are good. I think they're important. They, they're moving in the right direction. So yeah, that's that's my take here. And uh, let's think about where. All of this is going. Um, so, 10 years ago, I wrote an article called Web After Tomorrow. Um, in that article, I kind of outlined like the sync engines, more or less. Uh, and I had some nice uh, slogans like server is not required or every pixel reactive. Um, and uh, at the moment of the writing, I think like Firebase was only more or less the only solution out there. Now we have options, right? And it's great, so we kind of arrived or like really close to this web after tomorrow vision. And the question arises like, what's next? Another thing that I want to not mention, notice, is like the, in this landscape, it has a lot of stuff. Like it's not everything. Like there's probably some, some more stuff as well to draw, right? And it's like, tens of technologies that we need to know to just to build an application. And some technology comes, comes and like joins too. So instead of 10, you have nine now, right? And everybody, everybody cheers about it, like, hey, it's so cool. We now have to deal with less complexity, which is true, but it's also kind of sad because we, we, we only simplified a little bit and it's already gave us a lot, right? So Maybe if we simplify even more, we move for like even more forward, like it will be even better. So that's my vision for future of programming. It's one system, like I want a one place where I can write my program, like in one file, everything that I need to do. It probably will look very different from uh, what we have today. It probably will be a different programming language. Uh, it will probably have database somehow built in this da database language UI as well. It's definitely not going to be a browser. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the ultimate simplification, if you want everything joined, that's uh, the goal that we should move towards. OK, uh, let me, this, this is mine. Um. Let's uh, change gears for a bit and uh, talk about DX. So everything we talk about, uh, I'm going to run into questions time uh, as well. Uh, DX. 
developer experience. So everything we're talking about, sync engines are all about developers, right? Um, it's like we do it for ourselves so we can write programs easily. We don't really do it for users. We do it for ourselves. But uh, in the, if we take a bigger look, what is bigger than DX? It's UX. Um, user experience. So let's change hats. Uh, instead of being a developer, let's try being a user for a while. Uh, I have another diagram. Uh, yeah, I apologize for so many diagrams, but yeah, I feel like a business coach delivering like a 10 minute talk, like two diagrams, sorry. Uh, so this is a pyramid of uh, a hierarchy of needs of a user, right? What users want from your application. Uh, and it works like a Maslow pyramid, so you care about bottom layer, once you get the bottom layer, you care about next layer, once you get next one, you, you care about one on top. Uh, before you get it, it's all like you don't really care about top layers. Uh, so for user experience, like for applications, users care about application if they are affordable, if they solve the problem, then if, if it does all that, they start to care about can I understand it, is it easy to understand, to get started, right? Is it easy to use, and then finally, is it beautiful? So that's my... My theory, like, yeah, maybe it's questionable, yeah, maybe some layers could be moved around, but it's not really that important, details are not really that important. Uh, what's important here is there is no mention of technology, right? No language, like, which language did you use? Users don't care. Which technology did you use? Don't care. Did you use a sync engine? Good for you. I don't care. Um, but, 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 and now we're circling back to local first. Like, there is a place for local first in here, and it's like on fourth layer, so pretty high up, uh, but it is there. So local first has uh, some stuff embedded in it that is directed at users, right? So sync engines, yeah, all about developers, but local first, it's also about users. So they give users some stuff that users actually can care about, uh, like working offline, speed, like you can make really fast applications with local first, right? Uh, owning the data and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's why users actually could care about local first. I don't say they do or like always do, but if you give them that, they would care probably a little bit if they get all the layers before that. So that's why I think the problem that we have is not that we have to convince users to like, like local first and use local first or care about local first, is that we should convince developers to, to use local first. And if we convince developers, uh, and they did use local first, they will automatically give users something that users can care about, which is a good thing, right? We write better applications this way. So in the end, yeah, I'm not sure if local first is going to win or not, or maybe some part of it will. Um, definitely, uh, users will care if they go like, uh, like all the layers, but they mostly care about bottom ones. And like, given the current state of software, it's not, it's not a given that pro software exists that solves your problem or easy to understand or easy to use. But yeah, what I know is that good programs will win, right? So like, if you solve all these layers, yeah, they will probably win, whether you include local first or not. So that's my uh, advice. Let's write good programs. I will try to write better programs myself. Thank you. That's all.